Okay, so today's video is going to be pretty short because while there is like quite a bit of coverage on this case, um, the lady that we're discussing today, Sarah, she's not the main player in this case. So I'm saving most of the details for if I decide to cover Constanza, who is like our big boy cult leader man, you know? So that's when I'm going to discuss most of the murders. But today we are specifically talking about Sara Aldrete. Once again, I don't speak Spanish. I um, have not been to Mexico in like several, several years. Um, I am probably going to pronounce these wrong and I am very, very sorry. Okay, so let's talk about Sara. She was, during the events of this story, she was in her mid-20s. She grew up in Matamoros, Mexico, which is like really close to the Texas border. So she went to actually, she went to high school in Texas in the United States. And she would just like, she lived in Matamoros, but she would cross the border to like go to school. And then when she graduated high school, she started going to Southmost, I think it's called Southmost College in Texas. And she continued to, like, live with her parents in Matamoros and cross the border to go to school. So she was, um, Southmost, where she was going, was a community college. So she was getting her, like, basic stuff there. And then she was going to get her four-year degree, like, transfer after her first two years. And her goal was she wanted to be a gym teacher because she was, like, crazy athletic super in shape like did all kinds of sports she was 6'1 just like a striking athletic lady and Sara was dating this boy named Elio Hernandez and his family was like they were ranchers you know but like they were actually um dealing drugs like as a family like they were kind of a I don't know if they would count as like a full-blown cartel, but they were definitely, that was how they made lots of money is by selling drugs. You know, Sarah's not like involved in any of that. She's just dating Elio. And one day she is driving home from school. She's in Matamoros and this guy just like blocks traffic, like gets in front of her car and blocks all of the traffic going down the road. And he's like, hey, I've been trying to meet you. Like, I need to talk to you. And she's like, get out of the way. <laughs> like, I'm trying to go home. And he refuses to move his car until she talks to him. And so finally, like, there's a lot of backup because this guy's blocking traffic. And people are like, will you please just talk to him? Like, I want to go home. And so she meets this guy. And at first, he tells her that he is in Matamoros for just like a week long business trip and he's like lonely or whatever and like wants somebody to hang out with during this business trip and so she does and this guy is telling her all sorts of things about her past and herself and her life and he's telling her that he's like figuring things that these things out through tarot cards like doing tarot readings and all of a sudden he knows all of this stuff about her and he predicts all of these things that are going to happen to her in the future and they all come true and she's like this guy is magic but then a week goes by and like he's still in Matamoros and she's like I thought your business trip was over like I thought you were leaving and he's like, I lied to you because I'm actually a federale, I'm an undercover cop. Um, so I have to like, you know, keep keep everything on the down low. So she's she believes him, right? But then after a while, he's like, actually, I'm like not an undercover cop. I'm he doesn't say a magician. He calls himself like a witch. He calls himself a witch. And what he's practicing is called Palo Mayombe. And people, a lot of people like refer to it as Santeria, but it's like not the same thing. Like Palo Mayombe is to Santeria 
as like Christianity is to Judaism. Like they're not the same thing. They have some of the same origins, but like it's not the same religion. So here's the deal with Paolo Mayombe, okay? Paolo Mayombe does not make a distinction between like white magic and dark magic or like right and wrong, good and bad, none of that. Like the example that I was given when I think this is what I heard on like Free Loops podcast when I was reading the, about this case. Um, is if you go, you might go to a Palo Mayombe witch and be like, hey, my boyfriend is beating me, like help. And he's like, great. And so he goes and talks to the spirits or whatever. And he's like, hey, this woman's boyfriend is beating her, help. And then right after the boyfriend gets killed in a car accident and like, the problem was solved. Maybe just not the way that you wanted it to, but like, he did what you asked. So anyway, Sarah is learning about this man and his religion, this like, she's totally convinced because he's told her all of this stuff about herself that she, she doesn't know that there's any other way that he can know these things about her. He's predicting the future and then these things are coming true. And then she gets a call from Elio, her boyfriend, and Elio's like, have you been seeing somebody else? And she's like, no, because there's nothing romantic going on between her and Constanzo, who's like the guy that, the magic man that she's been talking to. And he doesn't believe her and he breaks up with her, which she doesn't know this, but it's because Constanzo has kind of planted something, planted a rumor that she was seeing somebody else and like got Elio to break up with her. So now she is single and she tells Constanzo and Constanzo's like, I'm single about me and so they get together and become romantic okay and he's super interested in her like obviously he pursued her with all of this like effort um but they never have sex like they maybe maybe once or twice like they rarely have sex and she thinks that it's weird right but she doesn't ask a ton of questions until He's like, I need to tell you something. Like, um, you're not the only person in my life. And she's like, you have a wife? And he's like, no, 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 no. I have two other lovers. And she's like, then stop having other lovers. Um, like, stop seeing these other women. And he's like, you don't understand. They're not women. Like, they're men. And this man... Adolfo Constanzo, he's like referred to as bisexual, but like, he likes men. He likes specifically men. Adolfo only got with her because he wanted that connection to Elio, because he is also involved in the drug trade and like is trying to like get into the Hernandez family like business or whatever. But at this point, she spent all this time with him. She thinks that he's magic. She thought that he was like the man that she was gonna be with. And before this, I forgot to mention earlier, like she got married pretty young and then like he became abusive and she got divorced and it was really like shameful for her cause she's Catholic. And so she was so hype about finding this guy. She was like, this is the one that it's gonna work with. And so she was like already in it, you know, she was kind of dedicated. So Adolfo ends up convincing Sara, like, um, I, I don't know the details of how he brainwashed her into all of this. I'm sure that it was gradual, but um, basically he's telling her like, I am the padrino, I am this magical, like messiah sort of man, you know, and you get to be the madrina. And like, I'm going to give you all of these followers and they're going to be sworn to do whatever you say. And basically it's a cult. Like she, she's in a cult now. And she ends up being the madrina. And it, there's a lot of like dispute about 
how involved she was exactly in all of these activities. Like she knew that drugs were being traded. She was participating in the like religious, spiritual, Palo Mayombe stuff. But uh, 15 people were ritually sacrificed um, during the course of this cult. And it's super duper unlikely that she knew nothing about it, even though we don't know for sure that she was like physically present when these killings happened. So Adolfo Constanzo was the one who did most of these killings. They were all, all of the victims were men. All of the victims were sodomized by Adolfo. It was, you know, pretty clear sexual motives. But also he convinced them that, you know, as long as we kill these people, we're gonna be protected. And like, we're gonna be able to sell these drugs without getting caught because the spirits are gonna protect us because we've been giving them these sacrifices. And so what they would do is they would kill these people and they would put their body parts along with like animal parts and like other things into this, um, this cauldron called Nganga. And when I heard it, I was picturing like, like a big cauldron, like the ones, the magic cauldrons in Sims 4, like those kind of cauldrons. But when you look at the pictures, it's just like, it's a bucket. And surely she knew, like there were human heads in the buckets and stuff. It's impossible that she had no idea, especially considering that Adolfo would go on trips. He would leave and leave her in charge. Like, she had to know what was going on. It's impossible that she didn't. And so, you know, because Adolfo had convinced all his cult leaders, like cult followers, like, oh, well, we're protected. You know, he told them, oh, well, I my magic can make you invisible to the police. My magic can help you like get away with anything. And so because his followers believed that they were invisible to the police and they could get away with anything, they started acting stupid. And so one of the followers, there was this drug checkpoint and instead of stopping, because the idea is like all the cars are supposed to stop and they get checked for drugs or whatever, he didn't stop. He just drove right on past, straight to the area where they had all of these human bodies in the Nganga, okay? So obviously they got found out and Sarah, ends up going into hiding with Adolfo Constanzo and Adolfo ends up convincing one of his followers to murder him along with one of the other men. And like, she survives and she gets caught and she's like still in jail. But after she got caught, she was very insistent that she had no idea that there were murders going on, that she had nothing to do with any of these murders, that like if she had known, she wouldn't have been involved in any of this, but like, it's just not feasible. And she like, she revealed that she had information about these murders that like, she wouldn't have had unless she was involved, you know? So initially she was sentenced she was six years for like an accessory or something. Um, she was acquitted of Adolfo Costanzo's murder because she wasn't the one who like shot him or anything. Um, but the guy who did shoot him like got convicted of that, even though Adolfo asked him to kill him, which is, I don't know. I mean, he killed lots of other people too, so I'm not that pressed about it, but she later got convicted of some of the other murders and was sentenced to 62 years in prison. So right now she is in jail in Mexico. And um, if I ever do a Costanza video, I'm gonna get further into like um, the victims and who exactly was killed. But one of the victims was an American named Mark Kilroy, who was a UT Austin student 
who was just like he had gone across the border for spring break and they like murdered him in a ritual sacrifice and that was what got them caught that was like his parents made a huge deal about it and started pressuring the Mexican authorities and that was the big case that ended up getting them arrested and so she ended up um because of that because an American citizen was killed if she ever gets out of Mexican prison she is going to be um taken to the United States and charged there for the murder of Mark Kilroy so yeah, like to this day she is in prison she maintains that she had nothing to do with any of these murderers, that she was a victim just like everybody else, which like, I do think that she was manipulated for sure. I do not think that she was like, you know what I wanna do today is join a cult. But she was definitely into it and definitely involved. Like the people who went to college with her tell stories of like her telling them about spirituality and Paolo Mayombe and like getting really into it. And they were interviewed and they're saying, well, like, we thought that she was joking, but clearly looking back, like, no, she wasn't. It's kind of scary to think about. But yeah, short and sweet. That is the story. Thanks for watching. Our next case is going to be one of our male murderers for Murderpedia. All right, we got Nathaniel Jamal Abraham. He killed one person in 1997 in Michigan. So like, I'm probably gonna be able to pronounce anything. Yay for me. I can't wait.